When I moved here in 2006, I started attending a church and I felt like that was a really good church. I had never seen it, a church that big, you know, even though I was from Cleveland, we have pretty big churches there, but like the mega church or the word church in Cleveland downtown, uh, you know, it was different than even that. It was different. And so I told myself that uh, regardless of what I believe <clears throat> is happening in these churches and going on, I wouldn't slander the church that I attend and I wouldn't say things that's that's bad. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes the truth is bad and sometimes the truth don't sound good. And sometimes the truth don't look right. So uh, when my grandmother passed away, I had been a member of this church by that time about eight years. And I gave. I gave tithes. I gave offerings. I gave bereavement funds, scholarship funds, ladies this fund, gentlemen that fund. I mean, I don't care. It was a fun. I was, you know, because my mom always taught me to be a good giver. So I'm like, you know, I'm down. I'm down to support, so I never have to go through it. Because isn't that what they teach in the ch in the Christian church? Uh, you, you know, you give, therefore you never lack. Okay. So all these years, just giving, giving, giving. So uh, due to some issues with transportation and the church being so far from my house, I was riding with someone else for quite some time. And then when that person got tired of picking me up, you know, I just wasn't able to fill the void and go. So what I did was is I started watching church on Sundays online and I still kept up my ties and my second donations, my third donations, attended conferences, gave again, gave again, just give, give, give. And when I think back on all the money that I've given over all this time, it just pisses me off because I could have took that money and I could have put it towards my education, first off, because I've been in this church for so long, had been in this church for so long, and I, you know, I applied for scholarships, I applied for bereavement when my grandmother passed, you know, I called in and let them know my mom passed, even though I was no longer a person that was going to the church physically, I still was giving and I still was attending church online or viewing church online, so I was still active, but I went from being someone who was really encouraged to want to start getting involved with choir and I was doing that I've always been a singer and I started doing other things within the church volunteering doing special little events and stuff so it just shocked me when I had to call and you know let them know because there was a, a mother from the church and she told me well you need to go ahead and call them and let them know that your grandmother passed away and that it's a difficult time for you and, you know, see if someone can assist you with the bereavement fund. Okay. So I did that. The first time I called, I, I just, I got switched over to a voicemail, which was fine. I was patient. I called back. Um, the lady called me back and she took all the information. After that, I heard nothing from them. So I was like, this, this can't be right. You know what I'm saying? I've been in this church all these years. I see in here, when I go and see online, you know, sister such and such, such passed away, you know, uh, you know, we can do this or blah, 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 or just little general things, you know. So she didn't call back. So I let it go because I was like, you know, maybe the church is just busy, blah, 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 blah. So that was in the beginning of 2015. So um, in between that, my stepfather passed and then my mom passed recently in May. This is 2016. So... I let the lady know, the mother of the church. I just let her know because, you know, I was just like, you know, just to let her know because people wanted to know what was going on with my mom or if she moved here and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, which was fine. So, I let her know that my mom had passed and, you know, she, she pressed the envelope even more with this situation than she did with the other one. She was like, you have to call the church. You have to call the church sec secretary. You have to let the church know this. You have to let the church know that you're going through this thing. And it's okay. And to let them know that you had to take your mother and, and ship her and, and, and do all of those things here and prepare a service out of town. Let them know. I mean, she would not let it go. If she didn't say something that she thought she should have said on the phone, she sent me a text message. Okay? 
So that's what happened with that. So she kept pressing the envelope with me. And I said, okay, I'm going to call the church. I called the church. I spoke to someone immediately who left a message for someone else to call me back. And the lady called me back. All was well. Okay, with the phone call. She was real nice. She talked to me and told me, you know, you know, we send our condolences. We're sorry. You know, we are willing to, you know, just uh, see what we can do for you. You know, Miss Wright, we apologize. Okay, you know, thank you, blah, 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 blah. We're not apologize, but we send our condolences. Okay. So, after all of this stuff blew over, I haven't heard back from anyone. So, I called the lady again and left a message. Okay. Now, at this point, I feel like basically what y'all are saying is just F me in my situation. Now, the Bible and my mama and probably a lot of you Christians right now who, who believe different things are going to say that you should never give anything to get something. But let me tell you something. I have a 401k. And if I take my money and I put it into that 401k, nine times out of 10, my job going to match me dollar for dollar. Or if I invest on something, I'm going to get something back from it. I cannot continue to give my money to these churches to never see any type of personal development within myself or personal development within that church. The people, the same people is going to be the same people. The only people that get benefits in them type of churches are people who have been going for 30 and 40 years. Because every single time I filled out an application to apply for a scholarship for any year, I was never even considered. It's like, I don't even know if they got the damn application. So I feel like, you know, you give and give and give to these people and you watch them ride around in Bentleys and all these wonderful cars and they can fly in jets and their kids all don't even know what basic travel is. Probably ain't never flew on a Southwest Airlines a day of their life. I mean, just a good living. And I'm not knocking nobody for having a good living. But when your good living takes from my living and I become more poor to give to you and your good living, that's BS. And then when I need something, y'all can't even uh, help a sister out. I can't, I can't get a card. I can't get 20 bucks. Nothing, nothing. So I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't waste my time no more with these folks and these institutions because as far as I'm concerned, I'm just as holy as anybody else. People can do good and people can do bad. If you want to take your money and build it and, and say this is for the work of God, anybody can do that. It's all societies. It's all societies and it's all politics. And that's all it is. And I've been in societies long enough to know what societies are. And if they're secret or not. And it's just crazy. Like, I don't put no faith. You know, you have to be careful where you put your faith. I don't put no faith in these folks in these churches. Stop giving these churches your money. Just stop doing it. And just recently, I decided that I needed to uh, go home and clear out my mom's storage. You know, my mom was an advocate person in her church. She was over the children's ministry. She took the kids' money and candy every Sunday. My mom put money every Sunday in the church. If my mom got a blessing, she gave her 10%, probably 15, sometimes 25, and then went and put the same amount that she usually do for her weekly tithes in and there. You know what I'm saying? So my mom did that. I called the pastor and asked the pastor if he could allow me to use <clears throat> the yarding area which was the same yarding that my mom used to have when she lived on that same street. They all used to share a common ground. So I'm like, you know, I just need to ask him if I could use this uh, one day so I can have a yard sale and get rid of all my mom's things. Now, see, this is the thing. He didn't know if I was going to go ahead and take every single amount that I received from the people out in the public and give it to that church or not. You know what I'm saying? I probably would have sold a very generous seed there just because it was my mom's stuff. And I know that you have to continue to do things that people do. People will want them to be, want you to do them or to be handled that way. So, you know, it's just like people knock off their blessings when they become greedy. You know, I know for a fact that the things that my mom did help pay for the lights and air conditioners and all types of things in that place. And I just think that that's very selfish. So that was the third thing. That's the third thing. Three fucking strikes. Y'all out. I'm done with churches. I don't want to have nothing to do with them. I used to sing for the Lord in them. I didn't did all types of good things. And I just don't want to have nothing to do with them. No more. No more. No more. Stop giving these people your money. I cannot express how hard it is. And my mama probably would slap the living shit out of me right now for talking like this. But I talked like this when she was alive and I let her know how I felt. 
I sure did. Because I just don't think we should be giving these people our money. We are in psychological locks. We are holding ourselves back. If we take this own money, take the money that you give into this church and put it in some life insurance. You know, I thank God my mom had life insurance. Because it was a it was a difficult process on me financially because I was the only child anyways and I still had to come out of my pocket for things. So even with insurance, sometimes you don't have enough. So stop. Stop giving these people your money and calling it God's money. Okay? If it's God's money, then take it to bless you and your family because you work for it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm all the way tired of it. I'm all the way over it. So that was my thing, you know, and I've been thinking like, well... I'm 33. If I decide to have a child or children or what have you in the future, you know, how would I want to raise them? Would I want to raise them to go to church? Would I want to raise them? I'm not. I don't want to put them in no churches. I don't want these psychological locks on me. Some of y'all are so stuck in that book. Y'all can't get out of it. Now, I don't think it's nothing wrong with reading in the Bible because uh, even if you don't, there are a lot of atheists who know the Bible better than a lot of so-called Christians, you know, because they got to produce a good argument. So they read the Bible, you know, they don't read it. So I just think that if you're going to read it, take, take it for what you see and understand and learn, and then go back and realize that there had to be something before the Bible. That's all I'm saying. So that's the basis of this story. Stop giving these churches your money. Don't depend on these people to help you with bereavement funds when you need it. Just try to stack your life up to the point where it's a good life for you. You don't have to give to the pastor all the time. You ain't got, cause even the pastor fun. I used to give to those. Oh boy, on on Wednesdays at Bible study. So I just have no respect, you know, for these type of situations. And you know, I hope these people continue their hustle, and I hope that they hustle keep them at a cushion when all of this shit is over, because it's just bad. It's just bad. Stop giving these churches your money. Build your own enterprises for your children. Make sure you have life insurance for you or your kids my mom paid my life insurance for me up until she passed away and she paid it up so well that even after she passed away it's still going so i'm just saying set your children up i'm 33 she still set me up i'm like i appreciate you because <laughs> these churches didn't look out for me and i don't know if they ever will so set yourself up on your own block god's house on every corner every corner everywhere and the world still getting as worse and as bad as it is it's just getting even more worse so set yourself up stop giving these churches your money i can't i can't express it enough you know if you look at somebody every day driving a bentley and you on the bus why would you keep giving that person your they don't need it they don't need it why would you keep giving it to them because even if they're like, oh, because I remember one time they were talking, oh, well, Pastor and then went over to India and built a school over in India for some kids. Okay. It's kids in Brooklyn that need school books. You know? But it's always better and it's easier and it's non-profit and it's this and that. When it's easy to go and fund a school somewhere else than it is here. It's very hard to do those things here. And I'm not saying it's 100% they fought, but they in the system just as well as we is. And they got to live by a standard too. But stop funding it, man, because when you fund them, they fund them. 